Hey folks, how's it going? It's R&D Diesel, and today I wanted to answer the question as to whether or not you should wrap the intercooler tubes from your intercooler with insulation. Now ours is inspired to do this video because if you've ever popped the hood underneath a Super Duty 7.3, which did come from the factory with an intercooler, you'll see that they actually have some insulation on the intercooler tube that goes from the turbocharger to the intercooler. And for whatever reason, they don't have insulation on the secondary pipe that goes from the intercooler to the engine itself. And I want to see, okay, well, would you actually see some benefit if you did put insulation on that secondary intercooler pipe? But the way that I tested this was that I hooked up a temperature probe inside the engine bay to see what the temperatures were inside there. And I hooked up a secondary temperature probe inside of the intercooler tubes that I had. Effectively, the mentality you have here is that if the air coming from your intercooler going into the air intake of your engine is actually cooler than the air inside the engine bay, then you would want to put insulation on the intercooler tube. That way you can prevent any of the heat from the engine bay going back into the cool air from the intercooler. Now on the contrary, if the air coming from your intercooler is warmer than the air inside of the engine bay, then you would want to leave that intercooler tube non-insulated so that that excessive heat could be dumped out to the engine bay and you can effectively have a greater air density, but that's exactly what I sought to find out. Now, in the end, long story short, I did find that yes, it would be advantageous to insulate the intercooler tubes coming from your intercooler, especially the one that goes from the intercooler leading directly to the intake to the engine. Now, if you're curious to find out more as to why, then stay tuned. And of course, to test everything today, I've got my old trusty 97 Ford F350 crew cab long bed four wheel drive truck with the 7.3 power stroke diesel. Now, I'll have you guys know that for the extensive testing here, I've got a Napa 6637 air intake. I've also got a set of Stage 1 160cc over 0% nozzle injectors. And I've been running this thing on a, with a TS6 position chip, as you see here. And I've been running this thing in the daily mode. It's, you know, I'm running the injectors from full force diesel. And I've also got a nice gauge cluster here to monitor everything. But that's basically what we've got, and that's what we're testing. So this might, the results here might differ based off of, you know, if you got a different truck or something like that. But this is at least what I'm doing. All right, so we're inside the cab of the truck, and this is where you can kind of see my setup. Right over here, I have my temperature sensor. This is actually a digital multimeter that is basically hooked up to a thermo couple. And this it has this feature where you can measure temperature. So I'm using that. This thing measures in temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. And in order to measure the temperature of the air inside the intake, I actually didn't have a second one of these temperature sensors. So I decided that I would build my own. And that's what this whole mess here is. So this temperature sensor that I have is basically, it's got this Arduino Uno. It's basically a microcontroller that's really nice that you can program and everything. And I've got it giving us a readout to a screen. Ignore the lower temperature. That's actually for a secondary thermocouple that I, or for a thermistor that I haven't calibrated yet. It's the upper one here, temp A, that actually is valid. And this is the one that's inside my air intake tract right now, and it's giving us temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. Essentially the way this thing works is if you take a look, there's this little black thing that I'm pointing out with my pen, and that there is a thermistor. What I have this thing set up to do is it's essentially measuring the resistance across this thermistor. As the temperature changes in this thermistor, it will change resistance and based off of a nice set of fit equations I can turn that into a temperature which is what we're getting here but this is what I've got to measure the temperature and we'll see how it works out okay so before we start this thing right now I can see that the temperature of the probe temperature probe is 64 degrees that's inside the engine bay and we have a 54 degrees inside the air intake tract so you can see there but let's go ahead and start this thing up and we'll see if it changes and makes a difference There we go. All right, so that there is the temperature now. If you can kind of move these wires out of the way. <laughs> All right, so that there, temperature you see, 52 degrees Fahrenheit up top and temperature A. That's the legitimate temperature of the air inside our intake tract. This is inside the intercooler tube. So right now, sitting here at idle, I can tell that the it's about 62 degrees inside the engine bay. And we're about 51 degrees inside of the intercooler tube. So at that point, I'm sure a lot of this is because the intercooler is still cold and hasn't reached steady state conditions. But I suspect that it's going to warm up here in a little bit. 
All right, the folks, we're sitting here at idle right now. I've got the truck up to operating temperature. We're sitting about 190 degrees Fahrenheit, engine oil temperature. It's up to full operating temp. Now, inside the engine bay, we're seeing temperatures in excess of 120. It's like 121, 122 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, interesting thing here, though, is that according to my temperature probe here, we're about 76 degrees Fahrenheit inside the intake tract of the intercooler. And I think if we sit here a little bit longer, we might actually see a little bit of a heat soak going on here. So as you can see, the temperature inside of the intercooler tube is starting to rise. It's up to 78 degrees. It was just 76 earlier when I parked this thing. It was like 70 degrees. And we're holding a steady engine temperature, or engine bay temperature of about 125, 126 degrees, somewhere around there. And of course, this temperatures can continue to rise. So let's go ahead and sit here for a, couple, for a couple minutes and see if we can get this thing to stabilize. Okay, at this point, we're still holding 125 degree inch bay temperature. And bear in mind, this is taken inside the corner, not exactly directly where the intercooler tube is. So I suspect it's actually a higher temperature where the intercooler tube is. And as I sit here, I'm seeing the temperature inside the intercooler tube continue to rise. We're right now up to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. And I think that's because we're sitting here idling and there's not really a whole lot of air going through it. And so it's allowing the intercooler tube to really heat up. So what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and take this thing for a spin. Let's get it moving again, some air flowing. And let's see if we can get that temperature of the intake to go back down. But thus far, I'm seeing a really surprisingly surprising thing here is that I didn't fully realize how effective the intercooler here in the truck actually could be. And I'm seeing a, really a tremendous difference here. We're seeing about a 40 degree difference in terms of degree Fahrenheit between the intercooler tube and the engine bay temperature at idle. That's pretty staggering. That's a lot of room to have a lot of heat transfer to occur. Now also, as I was driving around, a really weird thing that I really am uncertain of is that the temperature inside the intercooler tube was actually colder than the ambient air temperature. I was getting this thing down to like 39 degrees outside, whereas you know, I'm only looking at the temperature here, maybe like 60 degrees outside is the current ambient air temperature here in, of course, the middle of nowhere, nowhere. But that's where we're at. But let's go ahead and take this thing for a spin and see what happens. All right, so after driving the truck around and getting the air flowing through the engine, I did find that the engine bay temperature dropped from about 125 degrees Fahrenheit like we were seeing at idle all the way back down to maybe about 70, 75, 80 degrees Fahrenheit or so. It definitely dropped a significant margin. I think a lot of that's just from the air flowing through it. But funny thing is that the air from the intercooler was actually still colder than the air inside of the engine bay. It was still about five, 10 degree difference, five, 10 degrees cooler. And so that indicates to me that under pretty much any circumstances that I see in this truck, that it would be a good idea to put insulation on the intercooler tubes to minimize any heat that would go from the engine bay back into the air inside the intercooler tube. But at the end of the day, I did find that whenever you're sitting at idle, which is what I had, I saw at most maybe a 50 degree Fahrenheit difference between the engine bay temperature and the air inside of the intercooler tube. And that's a tremendous difference. So basically what I'm getting at here is that if you're trying, if you're idling the truck or if you are maybe drag racing or something like that, then maybe it would be a good idea to insulate your intercooler tube so that you can prevent any heat soak from occurring. Certainly as you go down the highway, that difference is going to be significantly diminished. And even at best, you're not going to be seeing, you know, a whopping 10% increase in power or anything. So by my calculations, for every approximately 6 degree Fahrenheit that you decrease the temperature of the air, you effectively increase the density by about 1%. So at most, we might be seeing 2% increase in air density if we insulate this intercooler tube. And that's on the best case scenario, which you know, is certainly not always going to be the case. Certainly, things are going to change. You know, maybe if you start pushing a heck of a lot more boost, if we're talking about high performance, you know, I wouldn't say my truck's high performance by any means. It's, you know, it's got good performance, I would say, but I wouldn't say it's high performance. But nonetheless, take these measurements that I have with a grain of salt because it might depend upon what your setup you have, but at least for what I found, maybe perhaps, you know, generally speaking, you're going to want to put insulation on the intercooler tubes. Now for a shout out to a fellow YouTuber, 928OBS, if you guys check out his channel, he's got a real cool one, he's got a nice single cab 5 speed, old body style 7.3 power stroke, and man, that thing is real cool. Well, he actually just put an intercooler on his truck, similar to the setup I have, 
But certainly his intercooler setup is way nicer, way cleaner than mine. I kind of just hacked mine and put it together. But what he ended up doing was he actually sent his intercooler tubes off to be powder coated, which I think is really smart because that's effectively adding a layer of insulation, if you will, that will prevent any heat transfer from going from the engine bay back into the cold air from the intercooler. And I think that's probably about the cleanest setup that you can get is by putting that powder coating on it. You know, it's certainly a lot cleaner than what I was thinking to do, which is to put a bunch of exhaust wrap and maybe like some mylar insulation on it. But, you know, it is what it is. And that, and maybe that's a topic for a future video. If I, you know, put some insulation on this pipe or maybe even if I powder coat mine, I don't know, we'll see. But right now it's not quite in the budget. But you know what? It is what it is. And we'll see if we can do that in the future. But at least at the very end of the day, you won't be losing sleep wondering whether or not you should put insulation on your intercooler tubes. Because now you know, yeah, you would get some benefit if you did. Anyways, folks, thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked the video, and I hope it helped you out a lot. And meantime, y'all take care. Thanks.